Hey, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So a few weeks ago, uh, Christian Henson of Spitfire uh, put out this uh, competition, sort of. He recorded two samples and uploaded them and said, let's see what you guys can make from this. So I thought I would give it a shot. I thought I'd try to make a cool instrument out of it. Uh, and I th also thought it would be a good springboard for talking a little bit about how to do spectral editing to get rid of unwanted frequencies from a sample. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So first things first, we're going to download the samples, which are hosted in his Dropbox. And I'm just going to click download, direct download. And let us look at the samples that we have. Well, let's just load them up into contact and see how they sound automatically. Let's just pull one of the files directly in. We don't even need to create a project. So this sample I think was recorded in like a subway station, something like that. And it's just this, uh, it's a little bit of him talking, a little bit of background noise, and then uh, I think some like really high frequency uh, pitch. Uh, and that's gonna be, I guess, the core of the instrument, the actual pitch. So uh, let's, uh, let's give it a listen. So that's that high pitch I was talking about. So let us see if we can find that already. No, that's him talking. Must happen later. Okay, let's zoom in even more. So that background noise has to go. Um, okay, so I think what we wanna do is we want to already bring the sample into uh, RX6 and try to do some spectral editing. Um, particularly, I think I wanna to try to get rid of the low frequencies. So the program that I use for doing spectral editing is uh, Isotopes RX6. I got this for like 29 bucks. It's like the elements, the cheap version of this program, but it's uh, well powerful enough to do this kind of um, spectral editing. Uh, so we're gonna pull this file in and whoa. So if we look here, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that there are these bands. That is the actual signal that we want to uh, work with. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of stuff here. So what we can do is we can actually select this frequency only. And if we wanted, we could isolate this. So right now I've selected that frequency and you can do a vertical zoom here to get much more precise. So let's say we wanted to just have this nice, obviously if we hit delete, it's actually gonna get rid of that frequency. We want the opposite of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna invert our selection and we're gonna delete that. And now we've only got So as we can see, we've already gotten rid of a lot of the background noise. It's pretty cool. But there's also something else that you may have noticed, which is that I'm going to zoom back out. With each of these, it's not just one frequency. There's actually like little harmonics up here and we want to preserve those harmonics. It would be a real shame to get rid of those. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to select our ideal frequency. So that's our ideal frequency range. And we're going to click this button here. And what this does is it actually um, finds all of the harmonics above a signal. So generally when you have harmonics like this, they're um, either a fifth or an octave above. I think that this only looks for um, octave harmonics probably. Um, so oh, before I click this, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see. So here's the next harmonic. It's probably an octave up from the beat. So we're gonna click all. And as you can see, it selected it perfectly. And if we were to go up further and further, we can see that we are actually selecting the harmonics pretty effectively. Well, let's just see what happens if we... So 
So what does that leave us with? Okay, so we've got three good good signals. Uh, I'm going to switch back to time selection and we can get rid of a bunch of this. I don't think we need more than three signals anyway. Get rid of some of this weird warbly stuff. Although, maybe cool to work with. But oh, whatever, let's leave it in. Okay, so now we have our uh, nice spectrally edited signal and we're going to go back into contact and I'm going to just go into the mapping editor, right click on this, do exchange sample and we're going to grab a edit one and now you can see it's very easy to pick out uh, where we have our beeps because they're all very well delineated uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a tuner and I'm actually going to use a plugin called GTune which is a free um, free VST uh, the reason I use GTune is because it actually shows you um, the uh, the frequency and it's pretty helpful for me to have the actual uh, frequency you know it would have been really smart if I actually got the frequency out of RX when I was looking at it so let's um, let's actually figure out the frequency in RX okay so it's about 4,000 Hertz so I have a lookup table for this kind of thing and I think it's called MIDI notes Okay, so we're going to find 4,000 hertz. So this is close to a C, a C7. It's probably between a C7 and a B6. Let's call it a B6. I'm gonna zoom in even more. Thirty-nine. Okay, so it's probably actually very close to a B6. So we're gonna change this to B6. And if we wanna make sure that we're actually using the same numbering, we can actually enter in 107 there, which is the MIDI note number for B6. Okay, now we're in business. Okay, so we've got a basic instrument here and what I want to do is I want to turn on looping so it's kind of like an organ uh, but because it's warbling and because it's a stereo signal it kind of also sounds a little bit like a glass harmonica or something that has like this unpredictable um, uh, vibration. Okay, so now that we've got our melodic component, uh, I want to try to add some character back in because one of the things that I did when I did the spectral editing is I kind of like sucked out all of the interesting stuff from the signal. Um, so the other uh, sample that we're supposed to work with is this um, uh, rusty gate sample and I'll play it for you in RX actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool sounding. You can see here the frequencies of the different birds singing. This was recorded outside. Okay, so this is the thing that we're going to add on top of our sort of very um, uh, docile organ kind of pad sound. Um, one of the things that I like to do when I'm exploring sounds and when I'm trying to like come up with a contact instrument is I, I like to exploit the fact that you can load multiple instruments uh, at the same time in contact. So what I'll do is I'll make like four or five instruments and then I'll choose the ones that I like and combine them into one patch, you know, at the final stage. So I'm going to make a bunch of different um, instruments based on this um, rusty gate sample and see which one of them sticks. There it is. Let's hear how it sounds. So one of the challenges of this is that um, that's actually, it's changing pitch as it goes along. So we're gonna need to find a very small section of that and, and loop it. My goal is to make kind of like a pad instrument out of this, but
Let's go down very low. So that's a, that's a, an actual tone. So if we were to just go. Okay, so we've got a sustained tone here. So I don't even dare adjust the zoom on my version of contact because there's so many bugs with the zooming in contact. Okay, here we go. Then do a little crossfade. It's pretty cool sounding. Okay, so let's figure out what pitch that is. Ooh, I'm not getting much love from the tuner. Let's go back to RX and see if we can figure it out from there. Okay. Is this the frequency? That does seem... Ooh, lost track of where I even am. <laughs> up here okay according to that 1900 hertz so let's go back to my trusty table so a sharp five so let's go into mapping so let's make sure that we got our tuning right what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, enable them both at the same time Okay, it's starting to sound like something. Uh, I think I'm actually going to save this rusty gate one and um, maybe actually load it back in and make some changes to it. I'm gonna call this one rusty gate two and turn off looping. What if we focused on this second rusty gate? Okay, that part's great. That's really, really cool. sounds like underwater okay so let us save that before I ruin it somehow and it occurs to me that I never actually saved this so let's combine one and three So yeah, I'm going to play with this a little bit more, and uh, hopefully when I come back, I'll have uh, figured out which of these combinations of sounds uh, I want to uh, keep. So this is basically just the chorus patch that we looked at before. I, I got rid of the, um, the Rusty Gate sounds. Uh, I put them on their own channel. So we're going to add the Rusty Gate sounds in in a second. Give it a little bit more texture. Over here we have a drum rack. Uh, it's basically just a bunch of sounds that were pulled from the Rusty Gate sample. These are the hats, um, and the um, the snare is basically just another Rusty Gate sample. The only thing that's not actually really part of the um, uh, the samples is the bass drum, which uh, is just a stock Ableton bass drum. And finally, over here we have the bass. Uh, the bass is also just that chorus patch, but with a ton of compression on it. Uh, you can see down here, uh, I've um, compressed it a lot. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the beat and the sample came out. Uh, hopefully you also learned something about spectral editing. It's a really powerful tool, uh, not just for moving unwanted crowd noise or something like that, but also like if you have like um, a sample that has a bunch of notes that you don't want, sometimes you can even remove the unwanted notes. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, if you don't own um, RX elements or something like that to edit uh, spectral uh, content, I highly recommend it. 
If you've been enjoying this video, remember to hit like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, take care. See you next time.